You afraid of catching my cover? You picking a hand at me. To you, the big shot taker? You're nothing. You're just a talker. Stanley Kramer, simply stated, was one of the most influential artists of the 20th century. A film director by profession, a social advocate by nature, Kramer never failed to stand up for what he believed in. Born on September 29, 1913, in Hell's Kitchen, New York, to a mother and an uncle who were both film producers at Big Time Studios, Paramount and Universal. After graduating high school, Kramer enrolled at New York University to study business. Out of college, Kramer decided to move to Los Angeles and get involved in the film industry, starting as a film editor and eventually graduating to become a producer. In 1943, he was drafted into the U.S. Army, and during his time in the Army, he rose to the position of first lieutenant and created training films in the Army until 1947 when he left. That year, he created his own production company called Screenplays Incorporated. It wasn't until 1955 when he made his directorial debut with Not as a Stranger, a film about greed and corruption. From there on out, Kramer accumulated critical and commercial success, making films about controversial socio-political issues, garnering the title as Hollywood's message filmmaker, tackling issues like racism, nuclear war, creationism versus evolution, and fascism. An era of filmmaking defined by escapism, Stanley Kramer made his mark, his reputation, taking on tough social issues. In his 1961 film, Judgment at Nuremberg, Kramer presents these issues in ways which he would replicate throughout his career, confronting societal issues and examining the implications of the issue and questioning what the audience and society can do to fix the problem. In Judgment at Nuremberg, Kramer shows his formula by depicting a court case in which Judge Dan Haywood had to determine the punishment for three former Nazi members. The three defendants in the film represent the ramifications of these societal social stigmas and the further implications of fascism, characterizing those who actually believe in fascism, the first defendant, those who were too afraid to say anything, the second defendant, and those who were forced into fascism, defendant three. The characters help pull the film into an examination of the people behind these societal injustices and understanding what makes them do what they do. The film was nominated for 11 Academy Awards and was one of the most duplicated films of the 20th century. Stanley Kramer, I mean, you know that, we all know that he was a very courageous producer. High Noon, for example, is I think one of the best films ever made in Hollywood. And uh, also as a director, he made interesting off-beat themes which were all successful. On the beach, for example, you know, things like that was very courageous. So was Judgment at Nuremberg. Yes. While making his film, Home of the Brave, based on a play about anti-Semitism, Kramer secretly switched the lead role of the film to an African-American man named James Edwards. He had to keep the script secret and make the cast swear to secrecy while the film was under production so that the whole operation would not get shut down. Every day on the way to the set, Edwards would have to hide on the floor of Kramer's car to avoid being seen. When the movie finally released, there was outrage and Home of the Brave became one of the most picketed films of all time. Kramer exhibited this courage and creativity throughout his career. He was truly fearless. What makes Kramer special isn't that he made social problem films, it's because he did so during a time when it was extremely unpopular to do so, and because of the impact his films had on the country. His films were some of the most influential ever brought to the silver screen. His life and works established himself as not only one of the great filmmakers, but as a civil rights leader during a time of great disparity and change, paving the way for artists communicating social messages through their work, something that was uncommon before Kramer. I'm so pleased to meet you. After returning to California in the late 1980s, Kramer was honored with a Producers Guild of America David O. Selnick Lifetime Achievement Award, and in 1998, a special award from the NAACP, honoring 
his effort to highlight and counteract racism. In 2002, he was honored with his very own award, the Stanley Kramer Award, which honored a production or individuals whose contribution illuminates and raises public awareness of important social issues through film. Stanley Kramer's films serve as a testament to his vision of change and justice in America and represent how an artist can provoke awareness and change through their work. His contributions to the civil rights movement through film is reason alone to attribute Kramer with a national holiday in his honor. With a Stanley Kramer holiday, we would be promoting the relentless pursuit of social justice in the face of adversity and the continued representation of topical social issues in all forms of media. As Kramer himself once said, any American film that contains criticism of the American fabric of life is accepted, both critically and by the mass audience overseas, as being something that could never have been produced in a totalitarian state. This in itself builds tremendous respect for American society among foreigners, a respect that I've always wanted to encourage. The holiday would take place on September 29th of each year, Kramer's birthday. This day marked the beginning of filmmaking for a reason, art that has purpose and meaning, not just blatant entertainment, but intrinsic wholehearted representation of societal issues plaguing the nation. I've come to the conclusion without getting sticky now, that survival is not the important thing, it's what you survive as that's important. But the filmmaker behind that extraordinary social instrument and social entertainment was also behind, as a producer and a director, some of the most amazingly socially conscientious pictures ever made by Hollywood. And when you just read Stanley Kramer's credits, you kind of look at those credits and you say, well, that had to be six, seven, eight filmmakers that made this amazing contribution to American cinema and to social reality. But in fact, it all came from one heart and one soul and one incredibly talented visionary. And that's one of my fa favorite filmmakers of all time.